That's dope. This podcast is brought to you by Athletic Greens. Please stay tuned for more information on this amazing company later in the episode. Wall Street Bets started as a small subreddit of a bunch of degenerates who wanted to trade the stock market and turned into a global sensation. Today, I talked to Jamie Rogozinski, the founder of Wall Street Bets, who's now going to be in a feature film about him as a result of what happened with Wall Street Bets. You're going to love listening to this story. What's the status of the movie? It's coming out in September. Um, I believe that's a contractual obligation. So I'm, I, I'm tempted to say that it's uh, Toronto Film Festival. That's the one that's then. But uh, I have not actually asked them the status of stuff. Like, I know that they're, they're getting close to finishing because I asked them for a teaser for my party last night. And they said no. Um, but they asked me to re-record some stuff. They're like, but we got some pretty bad audio. Can you just use your mic to read these lines? So. But is it effectively a documentary? Of- it's a, so it's like a science. It's a documentary because what they do now is uh, documentaries, a business model for documentaries, they're low cost relatively, right? They're like still multi-millions, but not... 200 million, right? It's like a handful. You're not making Top Gun now. It's a few yeah. millions. But they, so, so you do that, and then people gauge the interest and the thing, and then like they scientifically, okay, they think this is good, and they think that's bad, and then they actually spend money on the actors and making a movie out of it. Um, sometimes they do a podcast, like there was that show WeWork on um, Apple. It was real, or We Crashed, I think. It was incredible, right? But the predecessor to that was a podcast that was like a, uh, it was like the audio version of that show, and it was incredible. Like I actually heard the podcast, and so they they release the podcast, they gauge interest, they tune it. They're like, okay, people listen to this episode mode. Like they tuned out during this stuff. Like, and so then they 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 handcraft the, the following one. So it's a, a documentary that's coming out. But the deal that I signed with uh, Rat Pack was podcast, movie, TV, uh, like series. They, they define it based off of the length. So if it's under an hour, it's considered like. A, Thing, a category and if it's over an hour it's a different category okay. they have they have theater like they want to do a musical on wall street bets he owns those rights too <laughs> yeah. wall street bets the musical yeah. <laughs> would you star in that or uh <laughs> no just like i would love to see it <laughs> started getting so into the hollywood thing when i was getting calls from from movie studios like everyone like i'm talking to the people that made like wolf of wall street like we had talking to people the guy that wrote sopranos i'm talking to ben mesrick who um did the social dilemma you know, like starstruck. I'm like, holy cow, these are really cool people. And then after a while, I was like, all right, I don't understand this mechanism by which movies happen because everyone appears to be the main man, right? Like not only because they're bragging rights, but their role. I'm like, I'm the writer. This thing does not happen without me. And you can have Leonardo DiCaprio tell you whatever he wants, but with me, this, you know, the producer will say, well, you can have a writer, but the writers come and go. Like the producers, the, the director, like everyone is like the, the reason yeah, why they exactly. exist. So then I realized the secret to it is whoever's got the money. So That's the producer. No, well, the producer, yeah, sometimes. <laughs> my producer, yes, because my producer also funds his movies. And so I was like, uh, all right, are you telling me? So Ben Mesrick, like Sopranos guy, it's Wolf of Wall Street guy, like you tell me you don't actually have a deal yet. It's like, no, 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 we structure it and then we sell it to the studio. So you don't have money yet, right? Like, well, I mean, it's going to be, a, if we have you, it's, it's a done deal. So, okay, so no money. Like, and so then I just went straight for the guy that said, like, I produce it and I fund it and I do the whole thing and I'll pay you right now. Like, and I'll make sure that it happens. The deal with the life rights, you sign your rights away, cross your fingers, hope it sells, hope it creates it, and you're pre- you're prevented from pursuing it on your own, like outside of this. Right. So if they suck at selling the movie, it never gets made. You have and to then choose the right horse. The time, yeah, and then nobody wants to watch a movie that's dated. So like, so I went for the guy that invested money and made sure that it was actually going to happen, right? So So when you started a small Reddit group a while back, did you think it would result in a Hollywood movie? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I, I remember very well that it was like thousands of people and we got picked up on by some publication. It was like, uh, for, no, it was like Inc. Inc. 500. Like it was a relatively okay publication that was online. And they were talking about the volatility products, and then they had a, a link. They said there are some forums on the internet that think that blah blah blah. And then the, some forums was like a link, right? And even use Wall Street Bets, and it linked directly to the subreddit. Um, and I remember that was a, 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 the first of April. I don't remember what year, but it was April Fool's Day, and 
uh, serendipitously on that day, the mods that were just jokers were like, April Fools, we're gonna like reskin the whole subreddit so that it's a joke, right? And it would be something that we'd do. And so they made the most obscene, not safe for work, twirling anatomy parts that shouldn't like, I mean, just nothing that you should be able to. And, and then we found out later that day that we had been linked to, like we had a ton of traffic that day, right? <laughs> like, okay, well now they're getting a good taste for how much of a, like a joker type of community this is and how laid back we are because they were all greeted by things that they're going to get in trouble with if they're, somebody's looking over their shoulder. When they... But it does feel like that sort of ethos and that Continues. behavior and shared by crypto culture, by the way, but this sort of like meme culture into finance you guys cultivated that's now become a extremely real thing. It is. And, and the reason why I use that example is because that was like a catalyst of like, we've made it, right? We've been recognized, even though it was the most not, it was an obscure, unnamed, source linked to a random forum on, on finance to eventually getting bigger and more mainstream. And, you know, GameStop is what people, a lot of the people that didn't know about it found out about it afterwards. Uh, prior to that, it was known in the circles of traders because they had done stunts on Wall Street bets that were as far as I'm concerned, just as crazy and outlandish as what we saw with GameStop, but it was more difficult to articulate for, say, CNN, right? Like that they, they're focused on, we really got to narrow it down to our non-finance viewers. And we need to just, so, but they've done some stuff like um, infinite leverage, you no, know, the infinite uh, margin glitch. Like they, these kids figured out a way through Robinhood to, deposit two or two thousand dollars into the account and then they would through a series of maneuvers have like infinite buying power and then they would yolo it on stuff right so that cnbc would catch on to that bloomberg leveraging your leverage uh, it was pretty, it was recycling these yeah. covered calls and they were, they were collateralizing properly so yeah so you have these these moments where pr prior to it being really big where it's like all right this is a thing now right like this is an entity this is an idea it's a forum right this is where that people congregate uh, although it had been splintering off into a mindset, right? Like we've had, I've had people from Korea say, do, do you mind if we start a Korea street bets? We'll call it K street bets. We're inspired by you and these things. I'm like, yeah, go for it. So you have regional street bets, countries like India, China, whatever. You have instrument street bets, Satoshi, silver, whatever. You know, you have uh, social media platforms that exist on Facebook, it's like the most decentralized idea, right? Like Facebook, Instagram, t TikTok, f Twitter, you know, obviously Reddit, Discord, Telegram. And, and so people just, it's, it's this, this way of mining. By putting street bets at the end of something, it's, it, it's th th they're bringing along that philosophy that you're referencing, right? This mindset of mischievous, uh, a little bit renegade, a little bit, uh, very hungry for risk, you know, that's, that's, it's us against them. It's, uh, uh, it takes different approaches, but the concept is the same. Let's have fun. Let's learn. Let's break some things. Let's, uh, uh, let's get, let's try to get rich, right? Like a lot of times, very realistically, the self deprecating or get poor, die trying. Yeah. <laughs> and then we have, uh, uh, just this, this symbol that, that represents the empowerment of the individual. And I think that with crypto, crypto, Started around the same time as Wall Street Bets and similar end goals, right? More explicitly stated that way with, with crypto, right? Because they, they're going after central banks and the printer and, you know, and, and, and control of the, the institutions and stuff. And, um, but the idea was, hey, the system's broken, right? There's a lot of flaws with it. We're going to fix it. So it's no surprise that the, uh, the tone, the overall... Uh, culture of these, not even communities, right? Like these, these, these groups of people, these demographics that are, that are advancing towards something. So like, and that convergence into crypto is, uh, it's, it's no coincidence. Right. Yeah. What, my personal- it's Largely the same demographic. It is the exact same demographic. And to be honest with you, I, I, I never was interested in talking about crypto on Wall Street Bets because when Bitcoin first came out, I was like, this is cool because I'm also a computer engineer. I have a background. Like, I understand the technology behind it and an economist. So I understand the beauty behind this 
scarcity, this non-destructible component, right? Like this, this uh, uh, how to retain the value of a, of a, a medium f of exchange, right? Because that's what the coin was intended to do at first. And I was like, this is a beautiful project. This is like an artwork, right? I wish them luck. And I even mined and I like lost my wallet and whatever. It doesn't matter. <laughs> like, I don't kick myself because I would have sold it uh, long not, ago. I'm not, not <laughs> harping on that or anything, but I lost my wallet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not butthurt. I'm over it, right? It was <laughs> totally 10 years ago. Like, and, uh, but I was like, I wish them well. And then all of a sudden you see Bitcoin, like, when they, like now they got volume, they got a lot of transactions. Now you got stores that are willing to use it as medium of exchange. Congratulations, they made it. But I still can't buy stock options on them, and their spreads are just insane, and the, the, the inefficiencies are not compatible with my technical trading style, which requires like no slippage, support resistance, like you know where my execution has to be filled a certain way. In that same way that I'm not interested in penny stocks, like I know they're not the same thing, but in my head and in my style, I put that as I can't. I think that's a like common. I can't make money there. And so then I see more coins popping up. I'm like, okay, that's just annoying, right? Because now there's just more coins and it's just cash grabs. And, uh, and I'm like, so what's the theorem? Why is it? Well, because it fixed a lot of issues with, with Bitcoin. They didn't have these like, you know, collision things fixed up and the, the, the speed at which they, da, 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 and I'm like, all right, whatever. And then you see, you have the Doge coins, it's the, you know, I'm like, uh, that's too bad. They're, they're, they're contaminating this beautiful thing that existed. And now you just have these like just little pump and dumps. So, that, so that's it's just stayed there in my mind. And then I always get people saying, pump my coin. Well, not in those words, right? Like we have a project that's going to revolutionize the world. You know, like come join it or whatever. But I just heard pump my coin, right? right? And so I'm like, no, no, no. And then these people say to me, come do, we're doing a Wall Street bets thing, merging crypto with, with Wall Street, like DeFi, you know, automated market. They're starting to use these words. And I'm like, wait, wait, wait slow down, rewind. What did you just say? What are you talking about, like an automated market? What do you mean? You, you, you mean there's not like a like a one centralized thing that? No, no, no. It's a computer. It's an algorithm. I'm like, huh? What else you guys got? <laughs> it's funny because I'm like, my God, what have I been doing forever? Like this thing has been here all along. Like why do they keep calling it Bitcoin? Like why do they keep thinking the price? Like it has nothing to do with this. I mean, it kind of does, but like no, it's. And so I'm infatuated now, and I find myself talking more about crypto than I do about, about stocks, and like. And that was not even the case when I met you. No. It hasn't been that long. A couple people, of years. You're... I would hear, what was this guy's name? Stephanopoulos. No, George. It was a guy, Andreas Stephanopoulos. It's a guy on Joe Antonopoulos. Rogan. Antonopoulos. Thank you. He would go on there and be like, I live all my life on Bitcoin. I pay everything. That, you know, and so he was an extremist. And I'm thinking to myself, eh, that's cute. Also, you know, good for him, right? But like, I wouldn't do that to myself. I like to just have a normal life and have my credit card and my visa. To, and... Uh, and the people that say, well, the banks are whatever, you know, they criticize the banks are like these extremist activists, individuals that are promoting the anti-bank thing. They don't get it because like, I'm not anti-establishment. I, I think there's issues with it, but I'm not against it. Then all of a sudden I'm having to do my own banking and I live in Mexico, I live in the U.S. So I have to do international stuff. And I sometimes deal with, with large quantities of money and it is a pain in the ass. Like this is a secret. The tab last night at the party. I'm like, this is embarrassing. So like, I have a lot of money in my account. So it's not th about that. It's just my card is going to top out at five grand. Yeah. And then you have to run the other half tomorrow. And I have to pay you in these little chunks because this bank doesn't let me do banking operations like spending money. And, uh, and so I actually have the majority of my money residing in crypto now because it's so much better than a bank. But I don't say that out loud usually because I don't want to sound like that extreme of this thing. You don't need a bank anymore <laughs> because I'm like, well, they were right. Well, I don't frankly, need a. I, I mean, you can even dismiss sort of like the whole ethos of it. And if you're in Mexico and just like you could say that and be just existing in stable coins, and it's just really easy to send money across it. the border. That's it. That's a hundred percent. You're saying I mean, crypto doesn't give you that give the idea that you're like exposed to seven hundred random <laughs> coins that you've been dollar cost averaging into. It's just really easy to send money back and forth in large quantities. If <laughs> it's it's and it's embarrassing how difficult it is to deal. If I want to send money in Mexico, I had to, like at one point I had somebody to go to the bank and write out my thing with a pen with my 18 digit account number. It's like, what if you can't read it? Like, what if it looks like a, an eight or a six? Or like, and then it takes a week and the exchanges. And then I figure out you can do these things that are like, they already in integrate. You have integrates to your bank, integrates to your bank, and then crypto magic in between. Click, click, click three seconds later, the best exchange rate in the world. And I can move a lot of money across. And, uh, yeah, and so, I, so it's it's better in every possible way, but I sometimes worry about sounding like 
the people that I would internally criticize as activists, right? But, but it's not because I'm an activist. It's because it's better. I was going to say, it's sometimes better. things are literally just better <laughs> when you try them. I want to tell you guys about an amazing product that I literally use every single day. Athletic Greens sent me some AG1 to test out, and I absolutely am hooked. I started taking it every single morning, and if you're like me and you need energy to, I don't know, write a newsletter, hit Twitter, look at some charts, chase your kids around, hit the gym, and you're just not getting that boost in the morning, this product is perfect for you. It has 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source ingredients, probiotics, and adaptogens. It's basically like having nine products in one. I guarantee if you guys try AG1, it is going to absolutely change your lives. You will become more awesome. And who does not like becoming more awesome? Now, to make this easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash Melker. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash Melker to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. There was this, obviously, the entire, you referenced GameStop, and everybody knows how Wall Street bets absolutely exploded. And I think there's a sentiment that everyone's a genius in a bull market. You probably still have your uh, finger on the pulse of what's happening with the re retail traders that got really active during that time. Well, now the market sucks. Do you think that we're back to people getting absolutely abused by the market and the little guy suffering again? No, no, because, you know, like the, the, the little guys, they're not, and this is maybe a little bit of the difference with crypto, but, but, but not as much. Like you have the active participants that are on Wall Street bets, like the core philosophy behind there is, I, at least the, when I started it, the millennials are getting married older, not making as much money, living in the parents' college, blah, 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 blah. It just, it sucks for them. So they can't follow Warren Buffett's advice to get rich. Right. And so, because they have like a hundred bucks, like a hundred bucks, I don't care if you compound and dividend meet for the tax incentive all you want, like it's not gonna work. It's not gonna get rich from this. So they're buying these lottery tickets and whatever. And then now 10 years later, the demographic millennials, they're better off, right? So now they have more money. And what they're doing with their Wall Street bets accounts is they're straight up speculating, they're gambling, they're buying, like what, how, what's the cost to play at this table? The buy-in is a hundred bucks, good. I'm going to lose this hundred bucks, but I'm gonna have a great time doing it, right? Like you can take my money, I don't expect it back. The people that are that are doing Wall Street bets, they don't care if the market is bearish or bullish, they're not waiting for dividends. They're waiting for Friday when their stock options expire, they're out of the money puts or whatever, like, <laughs> like just which way do I bet? Like. Robinhood has a green up arrow and a red down arrow when you're buying stock options to help you pick the right type. Like they stupefy it for you. And so it's just like, oh, so market's down now. Are we, are we in that mode, right? This, the, the whole j printing money, like no longer markets go up. Now it's market goes down. I mean, cool. I will bet accordingly. And that's fine. So I don't, I don't know that it's the I'm a genius, not a genius, given the conditions. Like the only time that I've seen people predictably lose money is in stagnant markets, sideways markets. Oh are terrible for gamblers but 2020 when the markets crashed they made so much money shorting the market and making their memes and laughing about the world and coronavirus destroying everything and the suffering and whatever and they felt guilty there was this cognitive dissonance and right they say, i'm profiting from the world correct and and when, when stocks drop they drop faster than they go up and so they make and because of stock options the way they're composed fast movements uh, are, are, are especially rewarding with stock options and, uh, and so people were making tons of money and they're feeling guilty and so they start donating. And I was part of a drive, like it rose $50,000 for these causes to try and fix people's like conscious for this. And they're like, all right, so, and then the market bottomed and then people probably lose money during the transition. And then they're like, all right, so we're going with stocks. So long again? St stocks only go up, okay? Like, okay, well, let's pull out those old memes, dust them off, like <laughs> let's put them back to work. So I, you know, the, the retirement accounts are in Roth IRAs, diversified, all those boring words that, you know, like they're not touching that much. So this is right. So they're not gambling with their net worth. Yeah. Which I think the, the perception is that yeah. retail is gambling well, with their net worth. The high profile cases, you'll have the individuals that do crazy stuff and they stick out because it's like, dude, he bet a million dollars on what? And like, 
Uh, so yes, that's the news picks up on those, but the majority of the people, overwhelming majority, they're doing responsible gambling, right? It's an expenditure of entertainment and learning opportunity. It's all it uh, is. You go to a casino with the expectation you're going to lose the money, you get some free drinks and laugh with your friends, and it's the same as going to a bar or to a movie. It just yeah. costs, a, costs a little more if your risk is managed when you when you do it. Is Robinhood still the preferred platform? Yeah, they have a good monopoly for it. Here's a secret. I, I never liked Robinhood when it came out. I remember. there was. A, that's why I'm asking, because there was this massive sort of shift in sentiment about Robin Hood and everybody hated it. Yeah, well, they, they always get, like, crapped on. But the, when it first came out, I didn't like it for the same reason I like Bitcoin. This is, I'm consistent with my, like, I need to have, like, they, they have line graphs. They don't even have bar charts. And I'm more of a technical analyst. I'm like, how can you, how can you draw your lines on this thing? It doesn't, like, what is this confetti? And, like, and they didn't even have computer. Like, it was only mobile. App. Yeah. And so I'm like, you're gonna, everyone's gonna lose all their money and payment for it or flow all these things that are bad. And so I voiced my dislike for it, but I didn't impose my will on the subreddit saying you cannot put screenshots because I am protecting you from your own losses because that's just being a hypocrite, right? Like, who am I to tell them what? And sure enough, I, and this is one of those cases where I realized that the masses are smarter than the individuals. And they were right because people loved Robinhood. It carved out a new niche for for traders who previously wouldn't have traded otherwise. Easy to use, instant, free, all these things. And all the downsides, which were bad for me, were not bad for those people. Because they're like, dude, I'm, I turned 50 grand into 50 million. Do I care if somebody skimmed like... Like front run my trades? No. <laughs> like, do I care that it's off? Um, people quickly forgot that in the pandemic, Robinhood, the only broker, unlike GameStop, where they had to stop trading the, the, the stocks, that was a regulatory issue that affected every single U.S. broker. Yeah, people are like, hey, but don't was realize like, it was only also Robin Schwab, Hood. guys. Yeah. <laughs> so, but but the, because they were overwhelmingly the broker there, it was the one that took it. But like, so that wasn't their fault. I guess it's a whole debate, but. But it was a system-wide issue. In the pandemic, their servers just melted because the vol- you know, a lot of people were trading. And so their service was off. People could not, during these lock limit ups and downs and negative oil prices and all these things, people couldn't access their account to do anything. On, on, in crypto, we call that Tuesday, by the way. <laughs> Volatility issue, this shit's broken. <laughs> <laughs> and so, but people quickly got over that. And I was like, dude, that's pretty screwed up. Like, you screwed up, Robin Hood. You should have had a backup server. And... They're like, all right, no, no, we're good. We're good. Losing money like a Tuesday with crypto. They're like, it's 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 part of the cost of playing, right? Like it's it's it comes with the turf. They're, I'm getting skimped on some pennies on Tuesdays. It doesn't work. Like whatever. Let's just as long as it's back up. And so they got over it. And, and the ease of use, the the interface, people will not let go of it, even if they're mad at you know for whatever reasons. They just like their platform, and they won't. It was so funny because there was everyone was using Robinhood, certainly in like the retail stock community. Yeah. And everyone was excited to short the IPO. Yeah. It's like we're using this platform, short it to zero. Which they can't do on an IPO, but like, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it, it, it's another interesting thing about this culture is like you have these tribal mindsets. It's us, it's our team, right? Let's put on the jersey and, and rah rah. And then we need to have, the enemy or like the bad guy or like the, the other team, right? That who we need to defeat. So the, the GameStop was hedge funds versus the retailers and there's always, and so it's got this idea of saying, well, now we don't like them and we're gonna show you, but we're gonna use Robin Hood to show you. Right. Like, I, like, I don't think that they're, they're holding too much of a grudge. I, the, Didn't Melvin finally go under? <laughs> they got bailed out. Like, Andrew left the guy that had Citron Capital. It was like another Melvin. It was like two main ones, and the other one was Citron. And he was getting uh, just destroyed with the short sale. And I get an email that was like hastily written from a phone with typos and no proper capitalization. I'm like I'm Andrew left. I didn't talk to you like my phone number. I'm like, but the, but the email was actually Andrew left at something like it was it, it was a good email address. And so I'd have been like this. This looks suspicious, but there's a chance this is real, right? Maybe you guys so upset that he just didn't stop and proof his like emails properly, and his and he clearly owns a good name for an email account. So let's call this number, see what we get. Sure enough, it's him. I'm like, hey, he's like, can you make it stop, like, <laughs> stop the bleeding, stop. man. Why are you doing this to me? I'm like, kids. I'm like, dude, you've been in this for how long? Are you complaining about losing some money? Come on.
But do, do you still think, uh, not them specifically, but do you still think that there's still this sort of institutional fear of what happened with GameStop and Wall Street bets in general? I remember during that time, I have a lot, you know, I have a lot of like hedge fund friends and guys who are traders, and they were literally terrified. They're like, I don't know what I'm going to wake up to on any given morning, but I don't know how to deal with this market. And they're like following your Reddit. <laughs> Like they don't know even they're like I don't know what any of these words mean, but I know that they're wrecking me. <laughs> yeah, on Bloomberg, there was like a lingo for Wall Street bets. Like when you see tendies, they're referring to profits. Like, like this is fucking. Oh, sorry, I don't know if you can say oh, it. You can. This is hilarious, and uh, and they're explaining. They're, there's one particular one which I'll never reveal. But it's like because it's just too obscene. But like I'm like ah, I'm, so, I'm so glad they didn't have that one. But what's interesting about that uh, that moment, I think there's two philosophies with hedge funds, institutions, or investment bakers. One, how can we profit from this new uh, dynamic, this new uh, force that's in the market, right? Because we're better at this game. We have better computers and PhDs and whatever. Like, right. we just, you, they can figure it out. There wasn't a Wall Street best before. There's got to be an inefficiency to, to exploit. So that's fine. And I think that's fair game. There's nothing wrong with that. That's what everyone's there to do. And it makes the markets better, like more efficient. Number two... They have altered permanently the way they do it. Like companies now secretly short sell. Like they no longer, they used to go on road shows saying like, look at the, sh- the shitty We're shorting company. everything. Like, now it's like, so oh, if I tell anyone, side. these guys are going to squeeze the crap out of me. Correct. So if I fire off a tweet and say like, dude, this company's going to go up, like, and somebody's short, I guarantee you they're calling a meeting and saying, hey, Wall Street bets, short selling. Like, I, and and uh, I, I believe that's left a permanent mark, but I don't think they're afraid. Like now we're the yeah. big ones. Yeah, 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 of course. Are you still trading? I do, I do. I love trading. It's it's my the, my money makers are trading futures. Like I've gone into this just really boring technical type thing, and I have such an obsessive personality that if I'm doing scalping trading or whatever, I I obsess and I go to my cave and I don't shower and I wake up in the morning in pajamas all day and it's just bad for my health. So I avoid that just for my sanity's sake. But when there's certain market conditions that are very conducive to what I do. I'll swing and I'll and, and it'll happen whenever it happens. Like when you see oil going to negative prices, that is a, a buy written all over. Like and 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 so I uh, I'll hop on those particular trades. Uh, and I've now gone into crypto, but I also don't want to try and I have so many things that's going on in my my addictive personality is such a bad one. So I'll have like a portfolio of stuff and I will buy coins. Like I had this great investment. You've probably not heard of it. It was called the Luna. And it was doing really, really, really good forever. And so I just put more money into it. And it was like the biggest part of my really diversified portfolio. And then I lost it all. And then all of a sudden I got more money again. And then I lost it again. I didn't do anything. I don't know what's happening with that. So like my... Oh, you mean they're free money that also... Because yeah. I, 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 I I'm, I'm not... I, like I, I'm guilty of this past month been so busy that I've been able to headline level keep up. So I read the headline or a tweet. Yeah. And so I see my thing. It's like, why is this worth zero? Like, <laughs> and of course, I'm like, I used to have whatever. It was like five grand worth. Of it. it wasn't that much, right? Like, like throw all these coins. And uh, and, I, and I forgot how much it must have been worth. It was like 50 coins. I don't know. I'd say probably like literally like 10 bucks or something. <laughs> no, no. They used to be worth like 100 something. Oh, I'm saying after. Yeah, no. Oh, it went from 100 no, no, to fractions worth nothing. of a penny. Like I can't nothing. even see the, how many zeros. Yeah. And so I'm like, well, what's another 100 bucks? Because I went from having 50 coins to like 15,000 coins or whatever. I'm like... <laughs> It's 100 bucks. I'll have like a lot more coins. Well, like on the off chance that they make it back, I still don't know why it went down. I, I'm guessing it's a systemic issue. Like I'm guessing it's not just like... <laughs> Seems bad. It's, yeah. It's, one is not like the other because all of them went down a little bit. None of them went down 99.9999%. But here's 100 bucks and they disappeared the next day. So now it's like worth like a two cent. And I wake up one morning, it's worth 150 bucks. I'm like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Ignore the uh, loss of the official fight. We, we made money. Yeah. Well, welcome to Crypto. The water's warm. Yes. Jump on in with us. And uh, maybe just avoid like Luna 3.0. Are they having another one? <laughs> I don't know. But when they do, I'm just telling you right now. I will, I will try that. I, mean, well, I can't wait to see the movie. Awesome. Thank well, you thank so you so much. This is great. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. If you haven't already left a rating or a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, please do that now. Spotify just added ratings, so please go ahead and click that five star. I'll see you guys next time.